I'll tell you what, the prototype of Mythwind might have been one of the most confusing, compelling, interesting games that I had uh, explored in my board game content creator journey. I remember being very intrigued. The artwork was lovely, and the idea of a game that has no ending, a game of resource development, a game that was modeling itself after, uh, you know, other like-minded set collection, do stuff style video games, was really interesting. Mythwind kind of took the excitement around games like Stardew Valley and brought it to the forefront promised a variety of players the opportunity to explore a world, develop a settlement, find resources, unlock prizes, all without any type of competitive nature, all without any end game at all. And I am really curious to see how this game is, now that it's been delivered. When I played the prototype, I was left with a feeling of conflictedness. Without there being a endgame, without there being a challenge, without there being a loss condition, sometimes the stuff you were doing throughout the course of Mythwind felt a little empty, a little open, a little purposelessness. And yet, the promise of the game, the idea of exploring through this puzzle seemed possible. And because I loved games like Stardew Valley, I wanted this one to deliver. Well, it has now. I, I have a core copy of Mythwind from Open Owl Studios. They've put out some great titles between then and now. They have a few more delivering, and I'm excited to dive in. I wanted to do a quick unboxing over here on Quacking Co., and then I'm planning to do a full gameplay review breakdown of Mythwind over on the main channel Quackalo, because it's one of those games I haven't forgotten which might be a good thing. It also might be a terrible thing, depending on the experience. So it's a one to four player game, and you're going to be taking the role of a variety of, of these different players. Now in the prototype, we didn't have access to all of them, but they each have the, their own way that they operate, their own little internal puzzle that you're trying to use to generate different resources. We have the crafter, the merchant, the farmer, and the ranger. I remember playing as the farmer initially. Now these little booklets are going to talk you through their own little puzzle and they're going to walk you through what you're doing to generate resources or build the settlement and town that you're playing within. And everyone at the table could take part in their own little asymmetric kind of uh, explorative puzzle. Now I have heard from the publisher that if you're opening this you need to make sure you start here on the Town Charter book because it explains how you organize and structure everything in this box. So we'll take a look at everything, but it does set up how you organize it right here in the beginning. Rumors of a mythical valley shrouded in mystery have been whispered in this region. Today, a chance encounter with a small magical being named Sprites uh, confirms the existence of this place. These Sprites call you to make it your home. Their reasons are unclear, but a struggling settlement of humans, but to a but for a struggling settlement of humans, the opportunity is too good to pass up. Fikes, the keeper sprite, guides you to your closest companions through the mountain pass that eventually reveals Mythwind Valley. The first sighting of the valley takes your breath away. Its beauty surpasses even the claims of the wildest legends, and to your surprise, there are signs of old foundations and an ancient tower that looms over them. Evidently, you are not the first people to come here. I know I have a bit of a lisp from my uh, braces and expander. I don't like it either. So this is going to walk you through first setting up the game, punching, organizing, and beginning to build out the actual playing experience. I won't go through it all here on camera, but I do want to take a look at what else we've been given. A nice map showing you the layout of your settlement. Nothing there on the back. A little piece of artwork here. Now, I think the adorable nature of the little sprites and stuff they had in the uh, advertising was one of the biggest selling points of the game. And then we have the tiles for each of our players. 
the crafter, farmer, the ranger, the merchant, and then the resources and the little polyomino pieces that we'll be building for the farmer, the uh, gears and stuff we'll be building for the crafter, I believe, or the hunter. Um, this is the merchant with their shop wares that they're going to be selling. Uh, and maybe this is the hunter. I'm not sure. But all of them are going to have their own system and mechanics that they follow. Okay, so nice punch board there. Good thick sturdy punch board. Feels nice. And then we have the player boards. These are going to be where you put in each of the different types of characters you're playing with to start the process of playing the game. Some of these boards overlay, and overall, production quality feels very nice. I like that they have this organi organizational solution that stores the game and gives you a way to experience and play it. Here we're going to have, I believe, our full set of, yes, yeah, so the different tiles, the different ways that you're uh, building out the map for Mythwin. So these are going to be the settlements and the resources that you have and the way that the city and the civilization is actually developing. We have some bags here, which are nice little felt bags. We have a few miniatures. I did not get the other miniatures in the expansion, so we have the ones for the core characters. And then we have a few unlocks. Only four unlocks, it looks like, which we'll get throughout the course of play. A few tiles, a few events that are going to present things that you have to deal with while you explore and play the game. Some dice for some of your uh, resource generation, weather cards, and here's going to be the location and terrain cards that you're going to be expanding. It doesn't seem like there's a lot in the game, to be honest. Like, the amount of cards, the amount of openness for what it is, feels like it'd be a pretty quick course of play that would finish off the game's narrative. I'm curious to see how long the game actually lasts when we dive into, like, the brass tacks of it, when we get up, when it get, we get it up and playing, and what replayability is like, because it's kind of supposed to be a game that never ends, has no, you know, end game trigger. So you play until you feel like you've satisfied whatever objectives you're looking to satisfy, and then after that point, you just kind of put it away, or continue playing at a later date, or go on different missions, accomplish different objectives, have different events pop up. So, how long will it last before we get to the bottom of the event deck? I, I, don't, I don't know. This, Like I said, this is one of those games that, ever since I played the prototype, it hasn't left my mind. I, I don't know if it's going to be something that is right for me. I don't know if it's going to be something that really uh, stands out. But I do know it's something that I've been looking forward to re-experiencing and replaying since diving into it initially. So, I'm curious... It's an uh, accessible, aggressively packed little box with some very nice components, some high-quality meeples, and uh, a premise that I have not seen any other game present. So, we'll give it a try. We'll get it, uh, you know, now that it's out of the box, we'll get it up and onto the table, and I will let you all know soon what my final and initial thoughts are. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later.